Nowadays, we are regularly seeing games being developed and improved over time, rather than simply replaced. This is especially true when it comes to modern simulation-based titles, and in terms of ageing, Race Room Racing Experience is amongst the finest of wines. Initially launched back in 2013, this Sector 3 studio effort for PC users has flown under the metaphorical radar for some time now, but as soon as consumers seem to turn away, they hit back with big improvements and updates. One recent example of this was a major force feedback update, which has been met with wide-scale approval from racing game fans, many of whom, by the way, consider Race Room Racing Experience now to be amongst the go-to sims. However, before this force feedback tweak, we had another major update, one that sets the wheels in motion for this title to take on the giants of the online racing industry. Ranked Multiplayer Mode So what exactly is this? Currently still in beta form, Ranked Multiplayer Mode is a new way of racing online within Race Room. If you're a sim racing fan, there's a good chance you'll be aware of the way the likes of iRacing and GT Sport handle online racing. Assetto Corsa Competizione also contains a ranked competition mode of sorts, albeit very basic in comparison to the other two. It feels like Race Room is set out to try and fill the void for PC users that GT Sport already fills for PlayStation users, between overcomplication and a lack of depth. The new mode isn't as complex or vast as the iRacing ecosystem and is more accessible. On the other hand, it has more variety and potential longevity to it than the likes of Assetto Corsa Competizione's system. The way it works is this. When you launch the game, the menu will often appear with a table on the right, and this is your ranked multiplayer mode schedule. If the table doesn't appear, by the way, you can still see all of the available events by clicking on multiplayer and then ticking the box titled only ranked. Then you can select a server and all of the settings and information will appear on your right. Anyway, back to the table, and as you can see, this is split into daily ranked races and an individual weekly ranked event. Much like many of the other popular ranked modes, there are two main scores you will have to try and build in order to move through the different series. First, there is a reputation rating, which takes into account the safety of your driving and your ability to race cleanly and avoid incidents. Then we have the rating rating. This one is about your race results, and therefore your speed and racecraft. There is a third score too, an activity rating, which is simply based on your participation. Everybody starts in the rookie servers, highlighted in green, where you can compete with no minimum reputation and of fixed setups. Race cleanly and your reputation will increase, allowing you to compete in the AM and Pro servers, highlighted in grey. AM races require a minimum reputation of 75, which you can achieve with one or two clean races by the way, and the Pro servers require a minimum reputation of 80. The Dark Blue server is a collaborative server between Race Room and a variety of content creators, who each get their chance to select the car and track combination for the upcoming week. The three light blue servers at the bottom of the daily ranked races signify longer form endurance races rather than sprints. Yes, they have both. Some of these servers might be AM, whilst others are Pro. Lastly, at the bottom we have the weekly special event. Now this only runs once per week on a Wednesday and you can enter a different lobby depending on your reputation and ranking level, each with multiple splits so you will always find a competitive race. The car and track combinations for each of the different servers are switched up every single Thursday around about midday in European time, and there's also servers running 24-7, so no matter what time of day it is, you will always get a race. Just hope there are other people with a similar mindset to race at the same time. It's worth pointing out as well that there are different servers covering three major regions, Oceania, America and Europe. So no more getting wiped out by someone on the opposite side of the planet thanks to lag. Actually, we, we can't guarantee that. The incentive to improve your driving and move your way through the tiers is also very much present in the form of your rating. Much like many other big racing titles, an ELO system is used to determine your scores. Don't ask me to explain that one fully. What this essentially means is that the relative ratings of your competitors are taken into account for each race. So, if you win a race against 10 drivers with very low ratings compared to yours, your own rating might not increase much. Whereas if you had the lowest rating on the grid and managed a top 5 finish, your rating will likely increase by more. Here's an example. For my one and only ranked race to date, I finished second behind my friend Robert in a rookie server race we did together, but as he's ranked inside the top 10 in the global leaderboard and I'd never done a race before, my rating increased significantly more than his did. Oh, and I haven't even explained the global leaderboard yet. This is the incentive I was referring to. Your rating gives you a ranking on the Race Room Global Multiplayer Leaderboard. It's a bit of a pain to find at the moment by the way, which will likely be sorted in due course, but for now, just search for Race Room Ranked Leaderboard on your favourite search engine and you should find it. By having a specific ranking, you can set targets for yourself, battle against friends, or try to become the best race room player in the world, a fact which you could back up with statistics. Sweet. Speaking of statistics, race room also allows you to track your progress and review all of your scores and results. You can do this via the in-game portal, or by visiting the race room website and logging into your account. Look at that guy, he looks happy. He's probably just delighted that it's difficult to find a leaderboard at the moment, so nobody can see what position he's in. Or maybe it's because nobody can see he's invalidated over a thousand laps and has spent almost an hour crashing into walls. I think it's time we discuss the Achilles heel, the one thing that makes full accessibility to Race Room pretty tricky for some, and that's the pricing structure. With Race Room, getting the game itself is free. 
but you have to buy most of the content, and as this is regularly updated with new cars and tracks, it can be difficult to stop spending money. One can argue that it's no different to buying yearly releases, and I get that argument as the game is continually improving, but it's still a sore point for some. This structure is great when you want to jump on for a brief bit of fun with the free base game content, or even the superbly valued starter pack, but if you want to compete regularly in the upper echelons of ranked mode, you will need to be purchasing more content, otherwise you'll be limited to the events where you already own both the car and the track. Thankfully, Raceroom has addressed this by ensuring that at least one, and often two rookie servers only use starter pack and free base game content, meaning that for the price of a decent portion of fish and chips, you will always be able to race something. It is also ensured that despite the rotation of cars and tracks every Thursday, some series stay the same. GT3s, for example, are ever-present as far as we can tell, meaning that realistically you aren't forced to spend large sums of your hard-earned to take part, even if your variety is limited and you still need to purchase the odd track. Then, if you really enjoy the experience, you can make the decision if and when to move through the different series and spend a little bit more money. Essentially, what all of this means is you're able to have your very own online racing career with structure, variety and progression, all within the confines of one game mode on Race Room. Marvellous. I guess there's only one thing left to do. And that, of course, is to actually take part in a race and see what it's all about. So I've got my daily ranked races here. You can see the three rookie series, and we're going to do one of those just now because that's what most of you will be jumping in when you do it for the first time. So let's just click on daily ranked races. So you can see here we've got Rookie Europe 1, 4, 3, and 2. It's the Zanvert Silhouette series that we're going to do today. We've got seven minutes left of practice, so let's jump in this one. Okay, we've got a few more people joining now, so we should at least have, you know, a five or six car grid minimum, which obviously isn't incredible, but... You know, we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to judge it until we actually see the grid, because it might be a fair few more. Looks like it's individual qualifying as well, so everyone will have their own kind of little mini server, so the track to themselves, which is means you can get clean laps in without hitting any traffic, which is good. Looks like there is only going to be four of us taking the start of this race, as far as I can see, which is, you know, a little bit of a shame, but, I mean, this is a Friday afternoon. This is a European server, so most people will still be at work, of course. Ooh. That's my first spin. And that's two incident points. You saw there it popped up two out of 40. So incident points work kind of similarly to iRacing's incident points. You get penalties for spins or crashes and stuff like that. And you've obviously got a limit of 40 to before you get kicked out of the server. No idea as well of the experience levels of my opponents, whether they're also rookies or... Oh, dear. Well, I got by far and away the worst start there. And I'm already down to last. <laughs> Way too much clutch, I think. 15 minutes, so I'm going to take it nice and easy at the start. Of course, anyone can join these servers, so this is this could be complete rookies, people that have never played the game before, never sim raced before, so I've just got to be careful. They're all, all of their times seemed okay, no one was miles off the pace, so they're all pretty decent. I've just got to try and avoid any incidents, and we'll see if we can get our way back through to the front of the grid. From the outside into the chicane. Yeah, I think I've got the move done, that's P3. Oh, looks like the front two are having a nice little battle. I'll just try and close in while they're losing time defending and attacking each other. Oh, the leader's spun. I'm going to go around the outside. That's a mistake. I almost made the same mistake, to be fair. I was too busy concentrating on where they were that I forgot to concentrate on where I was. Closed right up now on the leader. Oh, it's gone a little bit deep through the chicane. We'll see if we can get alongside and force them to take a tight line into the next one. But no, looks like they're covering me off nicely. Oh, got a better exit at the last corner. Going to run side by side down the pit straight, but I should have the inside line. If I can break nice and late, which I know I can do. Oh, they've gained a little bit on the straight, but no, they've actually gained a load on the straight. Interesting. Oh, they've gone in deep. This is my chance if I can take a nice wide line. I had to lift again, just to not make contact. We're in a very similar position to the last lap. Going to pull back into the slipstream. It's a good race, this. I'm really enjoying this. And this is in the rookie servers, guys. Yes, it's a shame there's only two of us in the battle and not, you know, six or seven people, but it's a genuinely good, clean race. Almost contact, but look at that, they just got, they've got the legs on the straight. Can we go all the way around the outside? Oh, I just can't quite. Squeezed me off a little bit, to be fair. Okay, they have to leave us room this time. This could be it. Side by side, I'm going to give them a wide berth, but I'm going to hold it around the outside. There we go, and they've backed out. To be fair to them, they, they backed out well before the corner. Very, very clean, respectful racing, but I'm through into the lead, guys. Checker flag is out, we come around the last corner, and we are going to win the rookie server race at Zanvert.
That was really good fun. The battle was brilliant. There's the race win. There's the race podium. Happy days. Oh, that's a nice dog. Looking at this, I actually totally picked the wrong race, because you see Rookie Europe number 5 here. We've got this, the same series, and then you've got 17 players in it with 5 minutes to go in quali. So our last lap, run a little bit wide. I don't think we're going to get pole position, though. We've got Ludwig ahead of us, and it was slower. So, yeah, starting on the front row, but not in pole position for the first time. Much better initial launch, but then I just gave it too much of a bootful. We've got a lot of revs, a lot of wheel spin, and we're down to P3. Ludwig's going to run away unless I can get back up to P2 here. Get a better exit in the last corner. Hopefully we've got better straight line speed this time. It looks like we do. I need to make this move stick if I want to chase down Ludwig. Oh, Ludwig spun. Avoid the accident. Hadab pushes back into the lead again. I was totally away in my own world there, and I drove the normal <laughs> Sandvert circuit. Just drove straight on. I was. I've been so used to driving that layout recently. And I'm now down in 6th position. I must say, so far in terms of battles, I've not experienced any dirty driving from anybody. It's been super clean. Like, people have defended hard, like that. That's totally fair though, and totally clean. P3 is in my sight, with only 3 minutes to go. It's possible, but I just don't know if I've got enough of an advantage pace-wise. Try to sneak down the inside. Oh, he's going to give us the squeeze a little bit. Pressure them wide. This corner's really tricky, but we've got an inside line now. We'll just leave enough room for them to get through. Now they've backed off. And that is fourth position and the yellow flag. Oh, someone's spun. It's Ludwig. That's P3. Lift a little bit early. Force them into running wide. Come on. Oh, I've got so much understeer. Oh, I had to back out of it. I went for it, but I had to lift so much. And it's going to be P3. Another good fun race, though. Oh... I cannot believe that mistake, by the way. You probably saw it in my eyes, I was I was asleep. The only consolation is we did have fastest lap. And I still got a podium, so it's not that bad, but yeah. That is ranked mode, guys, and all I can say is very, very good job, race room. Well done. What are your thoughts on the new ranked mode? Let us know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you leave us a like, and if you want to see more sim racing content like this in the future, subscribe to the Traction channel. Get it done, right now. Until we meet again, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, and have a great day.